So, you are really from South Africa? Yeah, we were born in France, but so grew up in South Africa. Oh Cape my Cape. God, so special for me to meet you. Oh, well, thank you, <laughs> Fast too. Du auch. Du auch? Yeah. Yeah. Or in Afrikaans, yeah, it was. <laughs> well, so we have uh, Numi, that's you. Noemi, yeah. Yeah, it's me on guitar and vocals yeah. here on the left. And we have Millie, bass and vocals here on the right. Yeah. And your name is Camille. Camille, yeah. Yeah, so it's a French name. Yeah, you said a it right. A beautiful name. Yeah, thank you. So why you don't use Camille? I love it, but unfortunately, English speaking people always fuck it up. And they say Camille, Camilla, they never say my name right, so maybe it's easier. Idiots. <laughs> well, you are sisters. Uh, you are one year older than. It's like eleven months between us. Yeah, really? we're actually brothers. So. Yeah. Okay. No, I'm joking. <laughs> and so, so you're you born in Paris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you are raised in South Africa, and you South still Africa. live in South Africa. Yeah. yeah when well, we're not on tour, then we spend about four months in South Africa. We write and record, and then we go on tour for about eight months yeah. of the year. Okay. And nowadays you live in Hout Bay. It's no, no, we used to. <laughs> we used you see, to. that's where we got our name, the Soap Girls. We used to sell soap for charity, for hospitals, children's homes. And then we would uh, sing and dance and street perform and sell soap. Yeah. yeah, but that was in Hout Bay. And then about six years ago, we moved away from there. Yeah. Okay. It's a good place. So you our address it. is number 14765. No, I'm joking. I was going to say that's not our address. You moved? You moved away from me? <laughs> so do you still feel some French? Are you French? Yeah, of course. We're like all French, our family, African. Yeah. All our family pretty much stay in France. We got some in South Africa and yeah. we yeah, we're very proud of our roots. But when we meet people that are shitty and they're French, then we're like, no, we're South African. Yeah. And then when we meet shitty people from South Africa, no, we're French. I don't know. I don't yeah. feel either one. I feel um, like an alien. So I j'aime bien de parler français. I love speaking French. I love speaking um, Afrikaans or English, or whatever language, yeah. but I, I, I am very proud of like my roots. So, yeah. Okay, can you tell me when and how music became uh, serious uh, in your life? I think from a very young age, we've always wanted to like perform and do music. I can remember when I was a little kid, I would stand up on boxes and I would sing and scream until people would just listen to what I was singing or screaming. And I don't know, we, we always loved entertaining people. So when we were about eight and nine, we wanted to do something for charity. And we used to take our soap, our mom used to make soap, handmade soap. And we would go down like to the neighbors and we would go and we'd sing. We'd knock on their door and sing. But obviously that was a bit dangerous to go door to door when you're really young. Kid. So we ended up at the harbor in this tiny little village. And then all the tourists and that would come and we'd learn different languages and... Yeah, we'd go on tourist buses and they'd give us a microphone and we'd sing. And then they would buy the soap, we'd raise funds for charity and we really enjoyed it. And then we were approached by someone while we were selling the soap to go into a studio and try out a track. And we were like, yeah, why not? At that point we were 12 and 13 and we did some songs and they were really cheesy. Very cheesy. There was a song we wrote called Boys, Boys, Boys and it got onto a Japanese compilation disc. And at that point when we were 14 and 15, we really wanted to be signed to a major label. And, and a guy from it, or Universal Records, yeah, an A&R guy, he heard the, the song and he flew down to meet us and we signed for him at the airport. And, and they signed us and we thought it was the best thing in the world, but we didn't realize that it was the shittest thing. Yeah. I mean, it's great to be, you know, Universal Records and everything. And there are some great people who work there, but unfortunately, they will put um, their stamp on everything. Yeah. And they will put money over creativity. They will put money before so it else. So it doesn't matter what you feel. Like, if you don't want to do something, no, that's what you have to do, and that's it. So for four yeah. years, we were stuck in pretty much hell. Like, we recorded an album that never got released. We did another album that... Um, was very popular and we, we actually we hated it. Yeah, yeah, we hated it. And so we, we got independent after like maybe four or five years of trying. Yeah. And then we flew, we had no money because we kept getting robbed in South Africa and we had like everything that's dangerous. That's why we moved out of Hout Bay. Yeah, and, it's a shit hole. Yeah, and then we, we got robbed and we had nothing and we wanted to go to New York. So we, we were at the point at one stage that we actually wanted to sell our own blood for money and then we were like, well, that's 
fucked. Yeah. And we made a plan and then we flew to New York, recorded for a month, and then again, instead of the songs being what we were like creating. When we heard them back, it was EDM, dance, pop music again, not what we wanted to do. And so we were like, you know what, we got offered a big record deal, a lot and of A big money. contract, and we said, nah, it's fine. And we left, and then we went back to South Africa, just kept on writing, uploading videos to YouTube. Someone approached us to tour England, and that was in 2015, and, and we, we didn't, didn't even back. have We didn't even have an album. We had no merch, nothing, fuck all. And we, I think a couple of days, we did that album, 16 songs in two days. We, just so we could have something that we could go with. Yeah, and we recorded it quickly, got to the UK, and we we ended up with like amazing fans. So every year since 2015, we tour, like relentlessly, non-stop. And we're super grateful for it. Yeah. We fucking love it. So, so yeah, now, that's the origin in a nutshell. I mean, obviously there's a lot more, more to it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so now I have a question. Um, what did you learn during the time, uh, the period, uh, the early period, uh, that you were uh, playing on the, as a street artist. Thank you. Oh, we learned that don't ever judge people. Um, people are cunts. Oh, sorry, you I need, just said don't judge you, people. You need, to have, you need to have a thick skin. If you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. And it doesn't matter how many times people reject you, say no. If you believe enough in what you're doing, just there will be people it. that are like-minded and more, they will actually gravitate towards what you're doing. And even now, we get we take a lot of shit because of how we dress or whatever and people don't understand what we're doing but even as young kids and we were just trying to make a difference and help charity then people got hated on by adults and stuff so oh shit man. i think in life you can't please anybody and if people are not well in the head then that's their problem not yours and i think street performing also taught you that um you have to make quite a noise to be heard you have to really yeah. stand out so yeah, especially if they're seagulls. Yeah. <laughs> but how, how, how was the uh, reaction of the audience and how was the contact between you and the audience in, in that period? People were just like stunned. stunned. Yeah. They, they, we, they stopped, they didn't know what to do. And, and we made a lot of fans that even now to this day, they'll go to shows to see us. I think more people from overseas appreciated what we were doing more than the local people because in South Africa, the mentality is a little bit strange if you're white and you're doing something like we were doing, then it's like, oh no, you shouldn't it's, be doing it's that. It's yeah. upon, yeah. Yeah, it's an embarrassment or something. Yeah, yeah. it's very weird. Well, you, re you released in 2011 your first album? No, that, like I said before, we actually had albums that were never released. Yeah. Okay. But that was the first released album. We'd done many before, but because of issues with the record label, never released. And, and then yeah. you were 15 years old, something like that? Yeah, at that time, wait, 2011, shit, yeah, around about oh, that age, yeah. We don't talk about age. I can't remember. We don't do that. If you ask me, we, don't. Don't. we just <laughs> think about that, and that's it. Um, but, but then after that release, you started to tour in uh, the United States? And, uh, no, no, we just went to the United States to... Please tell me the truth. Yeah, yeah, no, 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 no. We went to the United States to record. But that was after yeah. we left the record label. That would have been 2013, I think. 14? 2013, 14. Yeah, 2013. And with, uh, with South Africa, with the electronic music, we only toured in South Africa. Yeah, not overseas. Not overseas, no. Okay. Well, I also read that you had a first professional performance with the Idol's top 10. Yeah. We were guest How was that? It uh, was, that was very hilarious. scary. Okay, wait, I'll explain from my Please perspective, tell. you do yours. Okay. So we we had the good and the bad experience. Okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. Firstly, our dreams were quite shattered. We were very young at the time and we thought that those TV shows were real. But they're it's not. So it's so fake. fake. It's, Everything's it's not, fake. It's not even yeah. funny. It, the whole thing is fake. So we go there and it's like, okay, Cindy, look into the camera. You're going to look sad. You've just been voted off. You've been voted off. Look into yeah. camera left and, and, and do all the shit. So it was like, wow, it's a crock of shit. So anyway, we go on the show at night and we weren't even wearing something scandalous by European or American or British standards. We were, we were wearing um, purple tops, purple hot pants and chaps. It was latex, but hey. It was latex, but you couldn't <laughs> tell. And the, the way that people reacted... We walked onto the stage, you just heard this. <gasps> Heart attacks. Yeah, we knew we were gonna get into shit, yeah. and we were very young, so it, it was a very a, like very scary thing to have people after the, the show. The only time we ever ever used a microphone like in a performance was never. I just used the hairbrush before. So and like the, to be the put record on the label, stage yeah. and then like 
them this and then you're like okay well yeah. yeah we we had fun and a lot of people enjoyed it but we got a lot of hatred not because of the performance but just because of what we wore yeah it's just stupid. and the record label were bastards because instead of supporting us and saying you know what stuff you this is the soap girls they, they said lay low don't say anything for six months they made us like hide away and so people could go around like shit about us newspapers magazines horrible horrible and then the funny thing was though, even after all that publicity and stuff, the song was the second most downloaded song in South Africa. So, hey, I don't know. After Lady Gaga, so you know what, whatever. And the, the crazy thing is, people make me laugh, they give us a hard time, but doing that music, we made more in one performance than we do in touring. Like a whole tour yeah. for eight months or whatever. Yeah, so, so yeah, it was, it's crazy, but you know what, if your heart's not in something, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's not there. Yeah. Well, I have uh, another question. You, uh, me, or Noemi, mm -hmm. uh, you are the guitarist, uh, yeah. uh, the singer, and the performer, and the composer. No, I hope we you both write. You both yeah. write, yes. Hey, what did you change to <laughs> yeah, can, can you tell me why you play the guitar and not the violin? Because um, the violin sucks. <laughs> no. Um, the violin's are expensive, know, because, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, I've always, like... I've always wanted to be like um, Steve Stevenson or uh, yeah, we love Buckingham. I don't know. I love the guitar. I like how it sounds, and you can create different um, emotions through the guitar. Well, you can with any instrument, but I don't know. That's the one that spoke to me. Yeah, and it still does. Yeah, yeah. And you are playing the bass. Why? Because ah, you failed at the guitar. Shut up, man. <laughs> okay, that is kind of true. Well, I'll tell you the story. So we both started playing guitar when we were about 12 because I love. Oh, um, should I not look at you? I love the, I love the sound want. of Billy Idol's White Wedding. The guitar work is insane. And also typo negative. And so we started playing guitar, but what I never felt comfortable was singing and playing the guitar at the same time. And we didn't have a basis. So I I was like, you know what, fuck this. And I just picked up a, a bass and instantly I felt like this is my instrument. So I never looked back. And also she's a piece of shit. She, <laughs> because I'm not as good at, at her um, as her on the guitar, she was like, oh, you're not good enough. And so I was like, you know what, I'm playing the bass, just shut up. And that's how it went. Okay. Uh, and can, can you tell me how you compose music and the lyrics? If we tell you that, we'd have to kill you. <laughs> did, did you just compose it during the trip from Belgium to, to here, to Groningen? Every experience no, creates know. music in us, as weird as that sounds. But like, always the music is first and then the lyrics. Sometimes yeah. an idea will happen, like we were driving a couple of years ago and our manager had her leg broken at a show because people were like very aggressive and they had an issue with how I was dressed. So then they tried to attack us on stage and she came and they just like... Kicked her. Yeah. And so she was high on morphine driving in Germany. And she was like, whoa, there's so many dicks on the car. And she was like spaced out. So we were in the back of the car with an acoustic guitar. And we were like, like hey, sounds on crack. Yeah. Yeah. And we were like, whoa, dude, it's a song. And then other experiences like an um, armed robbery that we were stuck in in South Africa that made another song. Um, xenophobic attacks also where people attack each other in South Africa that created another song. Whatever we feel is related to what's happening in the world or to people that we and know. And also a lot of our songs have messages. Yeah. yeah. Because we, we don't see just, a lot of like injustice in the world. We don't just write songs like, oh yeah, let's just write a song, dude, like for nothing. We yeah. have to feel it. Well, on your website, I saw that your music is somehow armed with unforgettable melodies. Can you tell me where you get them from? Where do you get these melodies? On <laughs> <laughs> eBay? No. No. Um, do they fall somewhere? I, okay, I, I prefer aggressive music, and my sister has this insane gift for creating melody. So I'll generally do like a verse and she'll come up with this chorus that I'm like, man, you're annoying me, it's stuck in my head, dude. And she's just got such a gift for sound and, and doing... I don't know, I just, when you hear, even um, when you go in the studio and you play something, then I can, I just hear something in the guitar, I don't know. And also vocally, we just... And then it's there. Yeah, okay. I don't know how to explain it. Okay. Well, somehow the soup or the soap. The soup? Let's kill it. The soup and the soap. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thanks to the name as security, I'm out of here. Uh, excellent. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so it's, it's still alive also in your, in your music perform and in your performance. It, it's like you are washing and cleaning the world and the audience. 
That's cool. Yeah. I didn't know that. You never read about that, right? Yeah. So you are watching and cleaning the world and the audience and me and everyone around and even tonight. Is there a general message you want to share and yeah. with what manage, message you want to clean the world? Okay, mine is, because we're going to do it separately. Mine is this. I want people to stop judging with their eyes. You see, when people look at each other, they don't even see one another for what they are. They're seeing the way society has depicted us to each other. So unfortunately they judge and they have a prejudiced opinion of someone and they will never allow a person to be themselves without hate for it. So I love the fact that people will come to our show and they'll see an image of us. I don't know what they expect to see, but it sure as hell isn't what they leave with in their mind afterwards. They come up to me and they say, you know what? Um, I prejudged you, you know, I, I thought it was a completely different thing and, and it just shows me that society likes to vilify natural things like uh, breasts. For me, men and women, it's, it's just skin. You know, even weed, it's, it's something natural, but headache tablets, um, the chemicals that they pump into food, guns, things like this, these are acceptable to society, but something so natural as skin, something as natural as a, an actual herb or plant, it's, it's crazy, they all vilify it, but war is, you know, it's fine. I don't get this. And I love the fact that people going to our show are forced to look beyond their own prejudice. There's nothing inherently sexual about skin. And if you thought you were gonna see a pair of tits, after five minutes, if you're bored, you're gonna get the fuck out. But if not, and you've got a great mind, you're gonna just appreciate the fact it's music and it's complete freedom. And I love the fact that people leave the show more comfortable in their own skin. And that's it. My message is basically the same. No, what else do you have to say? Come My on. message is just like freedom, yeah. yeah. I don't be afraid of what other people think of you because, I don't know, they, they're trapped in the chains of what society has put on them. Exactly, and also I love the fact that people can see that we've come from nothing. We've come from the tip of fucking Africa, and we are living our dream. We got so much hate, it didn't matter what we did. And it, I love the fact that people can see that despite this, we carry on. It doesn't matter how many stones people throw at you, it doesn't matter how many obstacles they put in your way. If you want something in life and you believe enough in yourself, you get, get it. it. Yeah. You have every right to. Well, of course we live in a world that is extreme, like Trump wants to build a wall, we have the Brexit, uh, fascism is cooking everywhere, uh, racism right. is growing, and then we have also many poor and few rich people, and all the problems like corruption, and, 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 and you are from South Africa, and you can sing many songs, of course, about the cry of freedom racism and still ongoing apartheid, like I think. How does life in South Africa look like today for you? Uh, it's it's around up. the world. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a universal thing. This is why we are against judgment. You see, once you have an intolerance to someone based off their appearance, then it opens you up to sexism, racism, everything. Just homophobia, everything. You cannot be like this. If someone is an asshole, you have every right to not like them. But you can you, judge them on their actions, but don't judge people on what they look like. Yeah, if you, if you cannot accept what another person looks like and does uh, when it harms no one, then you have a big problem and you need to question this in yourself. And in South Africa, what it looks like right now is um, a, a hell hole. Yeah. <laughs> it, the, the nature's amazing, but like the rest of the world, so much corruption, so much hatred, and it, it's sad and it's perpetuated by all these politicians. They, they just want, want to divide people. They want people divided. If people stood together and they were united, do you think that those politicians would get away with the shit that they do? They would never. If people said enough is enough and said, why do you earn the amount of money you do when you've got starving people in your own country? Do you think that uh, these assholes would dare try it? No, they wouldn't. They should earn the same salary that they expect of their own people. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, that is how it should be. Racism in every country exists. In South Africa, it will always be there, in, like in most countries, but the youth don't have this kind of shit. It's not something that we grew up with. We didn't grow up in a party. We don't know it. No one that we know is racist. We don't. So I can't answer on a thing like, oh, it's but a like divided it exists, place. It exists on all sides. I've been to countries where, um, because of my skin color, I've been treated like shit. So I've experienced hatred based off an appearance as well. It works in every kind of way. Same, even like people with tattoos or if they have a mohawk and they go into, I don't know, a, a bank, they're going to get judged. It's bullshit. And then maybe if somebody's in a business suit and they go to 
a metal festival, then people might look at them like, oh, what the fuck is he doing here? But it's wrong, it's stupid. Okay. What, what you both like to perform uh, almost naked, what I saw, uh, with painted bodies. I'm a uh, nudist. The closer to skin you, have, you can get, the better. You have symbols and uh, messages on your faces uh, and your, all your body, your arms and your legs. What are the symbols and drawings about? This is the set list, <laughs> boys, because in case I get too drunk and I can't remember or read on the paper anymore, I'm joking, that's happened once. And then I just like to have it, like I always remember I can pick out whatever song I feel like. Basically she's too chicken shit to get tattoos, so shut yeah. up man, it changes by <laughs> your, your, the body, your body is an empty canvas, you can make it whatever you want. And this always again, a reminder, look beyond what your two eyes see. Don't just look at what, what they see. There's so much more. Someone can look like the perfect image of society, but they could be a fucking pedophile. They could be a piece of shit animal abuser. And hey, what, because they fit into your mold, they're all right. Nah. And the reason why we don't wear much on stage is because why the fuck not? If guys can do it, then why can't we? It's boiling hot. I'm a nudist. I don't ever show my um, below regions, whatever, on stage. And the reason is men and women, the top for me is the same. I've seen fat guys with bigger boobs than me, and you know what, good for them. But the fact that they are allowed to walk around without their top on, I can do it too. And there's nothing inherently sexual. The only reason it's sexualized is so that society can make money. It's commercialized so that people can use it as a taboo. And also to make people feel ashamed of themselves so that they have to go buy clothes. Exactly. So we make a lot of our own clothes, we also like paint because eco-friendly, it's like easy to just change your outfit, you don't... And also when you're driving in a van for hours, you, you don't, don't have space. Take a, yeah, space with clothes and shit. Yeah. And may I ask what is written on your leg? Set list. Just the may I just the ask? Yeah. yeah, the name of the song. All the set list and yeah. stuff. Okay. And how does the, the public uh, or the audience react on your shows? I read that in Hastings you were attacked during a concert. That yeah, was that once. Was that was on our first tour and that was a premeditated attack by an absolutely intolerant, judgmental... I don't want to even use the word I want to use to describe no, it. His words were that we are a threat to um, feminism, a man saying that. and. Uh, what we sell out slots. I don't know, but what you <laughs> must remember is this. Again, it was our first tour, and we had just come from South Africa, never experienced anything like this in our lives. Our gear got wrecked. We were pretty much like violated. The shit went into our eyes, smelled like vinegar, burnt. It was the hell shit, out of yeah. us. Who does this kind of thing to a band? Who invites a group to torment them? But I mean, not every show, but some shows you're always going to get a dickhead in the crowd. But, but that was the once and only, it's, it happened like four years ago. And uh, honestly, it's just, it was a reminder that we need to fight these kind of people. This kind of prejudice is what causes violence to people and, and unnecessary violence of appearances and it must end. But most of the shows, people really get our message. It's amazing. You judge a picture of us or you judge without knowing the show, you will get a very stupid perception. That's Even your own of, perception. A if lot you, of people, they message us after and they're like, I was having such a shit day. Thank you so much. You've like changed my mind. Men <laughs> and women say that we've given them a new inner strength to be who they want to be and that's really great. Even kids it. that have been bullied or whatever, like we it helps them because they see the, like how much shit or whatever we get and we like fuck it and we carry on yeah, yeah. but this attack resulted in a song bad yeah. bitch yeah yeah because yeah. we were we were red we wanted to leave right away we were like we never ever want to go to england again we fucking hate this and we were just so like upset and then we were we were like you know what fuck this take the power back bad bitch take it don't don't let anyone give you shit and that's where the song came from okay what, what uh, other special experiences you had so far, like best audience ever? Does oh, something God. like that exist even? Yes, yeah, it, does. Um, it, it does. changes all the time. Like sometimes you'll be playing the weirdest little town in the middle of nowhere when and you'll you have the best time. In, in Germany, like, was it weird. Ago. What, where was it? Wasn't it in Nuremberg? No, Würzburg. Yeah. Würzburg. Yeah, yeah, it was like some bunker, like deep underground. And it was fucking the amazing. People had so much energy. Yeah. Even at the they were just like taking off their clothes and going crazy. Wild, yeah, like cool. violently wow. marching, but in the most beautiful way. Yeah. And then um, we played at Rebellion Festival in England. My God, it is insane. Like beautiful energy. So many people that are um, like, not outcasts, but so many people that are not like fitting the norm. 
of society in one place, and it's, it's beautiful. Camden Rocks as well in London, love that festival. But for us, touring Europe is the best. Yeah, it's yeah. our favorite. <laughs> What well, your music is loud and raw and dirty and fast and furious. Somehow it's punk and rock and roll and grunge and whatever. At least it is still music. And in your last album, Society, Society Re Rejects from 2017, you also, you, a theme is also the death. 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 Yeah, yes. Well, I think, I think people, Can you explain that? You can't have life without death. So. And I think also people, they focus a lot, uh, well, they focus too much on like things that don't really matter in life. Like, I don't know, uh, people's cars or how they look like or if you think what's about this, this person doing and what's that person's doing. Do you know, we, we've got a friend and he's got a hearse and we were sitting in the hearse and, and this like, idea wow, came to me. It's really fancy, this car that you're going to transport someone that's dead in. And, and I in their whole you, life, they probably had no money. And, and they'd never sat in a car like this before. So fancy, but then when they die, their family and everyone finds money and then... And they had this big, like, but they're not even there, they're dead. So how are they going to appreciate it? You, you need to I live mean? your life to the fullest while you're alive. Don't appreciate the dead only. You must appreciate all that lives. Same like, you know, people like artists, like the guy from Linkin Park, people, um, they gave him so much shit for the new album and then he killed himself. And then afterwards, oh, he was such a great guy, amazing musician, but where the fuck were you when he was alive? You were giving him shit. What do you like about the Cape of Good Hope? It's beautiful. There's sea and mountains everywhere and baboons <laughs> those are her best friends yeah <laughs> well do you also experience silence in your life like no music no statements just relaxation just silence yeah do we have meditate that? a lot we walk in forests um the garden and stuff but music is everything we do i mean i, I don't enjoy to go a day without it so uh, yeah okay what about you How about you? Sometimes, not really. Yeah, it's, it's everything we do. We can be sitting down and like you just have this feeling to play and you can't take it away. Okay, well right now you are touring. Yeah. And of course, a lot. Yeah, of course, otherwise there's no point. Like it's so far to go from Africa. We hate sitting, sitting around. Huh? No. So no sleep, three hours average, four hours a night. We, we love what we do, it's, it's what we want to do. Yeah. Well. You're touring through the Holland, through Holland, the Netherlands, uh, Belgium, France, Germany, and Italy. Austria, Switzerland. Oh my God! How is it for you to be embraced and to be loved everywhere, almost everywhere? I hope. Yeah. And and is it like this? It is. You it know is, what? It's yeah. it's really beautiful. So even sometimes people might be like hostile in the beginning. After the show, they're like completely different, and it's great. But I always say like it doesn't matter what country you go to, people are different, but they're the same. So as yeah. long as people are happy and, and we, I don't know, there's like a cosmic exchange of energy during a show. I love that. I think it's, it's so beautiful that you can go to a country and they might not speak the same language, but they, get they feel the saying. music and they yeah. get it. And I love that. I love being on tour. Yeah. There's no better feeling. I, I can sleep when I'm dead. Oh, thank you. This is so beautiful. I'm They're throwing food at us. See, this is why I love being on tour. Thank you, guys. And what are you doing during all these long travels? I mean, you are right sitting many, many hours in the van. Oh, we just take the piss out of each other. Oh, our drama yeah. is epic and we, we just laugh and we tease them the whole time. And yeah. then our manager as well, we laugh and irritate we just, too. We laugh every day. We laugh we and we just to. talk about like life and everything. It's funny. Okay. Well, your, your new album, Elephant in the Room, you just recorded. Yeah. And it will come out in July. July. Yeah, I've been July, telling people you asshole man, July. So what is new about this album? What is different? And, and what is the general message in from that album? Can you I tell? Think it's a completely different album. It's Because we're always evolving, like our sound is always changing. So I, I it's my happiest album. I'm I'm very proud of it. Um, what are the songs about? There's different themes and different things about Basically, it. Basically like the elephant in the room is addressing things that nobody that nobody wants to talk about. So blackmail, people um, threatening others, violence, um, a lot of like deep 
there's a lot of deep meanings to the song. Like even the song My Development, that's like a political song. It's about people taking over land and telling the public that they have no right to be there. Because they think that they own that land. And v music venues as well being closed down by um, people with money. So there's a loss of culture as well. Different issues. Yeah. Different issues. Okay, well. Can you tell me how you listen to music when you listen to music? Like when you listen to other music than your own music? I listen to it loud, I blur it out. I listen to it, well it depends on the song. Sometimes just put it on and then like lay on the bed and listen to it. Yeah. I usually headbang you with crazy. Or if it's like a, like a cheesy disco song and dance to it, yeah. And how do you listen to it? Do you have a stereo amplifier at home? Usually just on my phone. Phone and headphones? I, I play it like um, through speakers and the TV and everything and I've got a friend who's got vinyl so if I can be annoying and go to my friend's house and I'm like, hey, play the music man. Okay. Yeah. And can you tell me what is the most beautiful for you to be a musician and what sucks? I think the most beautiful thing for me is uh, getting to meet so many different people and connecting with them. and. I don't know, having the same, not always the same mindset necessarily, but like um, you kind of in the same moment at the same time and to have that connection or whatever is a beautiful thing. Who did that? Okay. And uh, what is the other question? And the worst. Oh, the worst thing? Hmm. Probably the lack of sleep maybe yeah for me the best thing is feeling like a complete person that music's the only thing that has ever done that for me and again having the energy during a live show i feel complete when i when i write or i'm performing i love it there's nothing more beautiful for me otherwise i i, I don't know what my purpose in life is and then the worst for me is the driving because i hate it I hate sitting in a car for 13 hours. I fucking hate it. But yeah, but I, I, I wouldn't choose to do that with any other people. I love the people I'm with in the car. So it's fine. But it, it fucks up my knees. What What else would you do in life? Nothing. Nothing else. So I Just love that. acting as well. So maybe I'd want. Some broccoli in may, <laughs> Maybe I'd want my own. Feed you. I'd want my own TV show. But more than that, um, I, I love music. Music is my passion. And philanthropy. I I want to one day rescue animals, and also invest into helping musicians and people who don't have the means to do what they want to do. Yeah. And That's who are you in private? She's a bitch. Do you have a private? No, I'm joking. Um, life. I'm, I don't know. I'm very different off stage and on stage. I think I have a nicer, thank you, that's beautiful. I have a nicer nature like off stage where I'm very like calm. I love animals, I love kids. But on stage, I would most likely hit butt someone or break their like body with my bass. I'd fuck them up if they annoyed me or they did something that I found disgusting. So yeah, I'm extreme on stage. Yeah, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm I, always crazy. I, I like to think I'm chilled out, but I'm, I'm shy not. in real life. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah. That's special. I'm more quiet and shy. Maybe. Yeah. I'm not quiet and shy. I always say I'm chilled out, but they say no. <laughs> but uh, I'm, not as, I'm not as radical as I am on stage. So in a, in a way, you, you look like twins for me. Do we? Because oh. you... You uh, are each other out. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Is this always like that, or always, do you always. also fight? No. We oh. we can argue. Wait, can we throw a question at someone else? Do we fight? Say it. Sam, do we fight? Yeah. Says all the time. Yeah, yeah. all the time. No, we we're very different, but very much on the same wavelength. So we fight, but we resolve. And sometimes some of our best songs have resulted from the fight. So yeah. Yeah. Okay, and can you tell me maybe uh, what uh, advice would you give to young musicians, to young women who want to go there where you are now? Be who you are, do not change or compromise your own self in order to fit in. And if you want something bad enough, then go fight for it and take it. Yeah, it's yours. Then I thank you very much for this beautiful interview. No, well, thank, thank you. you. And I hope you have a... Good dinner. Good meal. Thank Still. you. Yay. Good appetite. Good appetite. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, you very, very much. Yeah, thank you too. It's very special. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. We were about to kill you. Why? Oh, why? Wow. Because they I... Have, they've got to have... They've got to have... Oh, fuck.
You Thank gonna, you for the interview. If, if she goes naked, it's your fault. Then I'm bleeding. Yeah. I don't mind. Then I He's go like, because... I don't mind. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, you, can you eat? Okay. 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 Okay.